Hey guys, Captain Mike, whiskey and literature coming at you tonight with the whiskey. I do both book and whiskey reviews, which doesn't confuse anybody. It confuses me and YouTube and probably my viewers as well. You click on for some whiskey and you see me talking about Jane Eyre or something. But tonight it's the whiskey. I've got a trip report from Kentucky and I have a bottle haul from both Pittsburgh and Kentucky. So I've never done like a trip report type video or I've done a couple of bottle hauls and uh, so this is my first time kind of combining them together. And if you have suggestions for me, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Mrs. Captain and I, we fly quite a bit. We went recently to Iceland and we did a taste and a tour at the only whiskey distillery in Iceland. I was super excited about it. I bought a bottle of their sheep dung smoked whiskey. Unfortunately, I had to throw in the garbage can at the Reykjavik airport. I couldn't get it through security. In the garbage can it went. So no review on that sheep dung smoked whiskey. We were gonna go to Ireland, but I got a job opportunity. So we flew home to Tampa, then up to Pittsburgh. Mrs. Captain went up there and spent one night with me. And we went to the Vigal Whiskey Distillery, which is a nice historic, uh, distillery in Pittsburgh. They have a nice uh, history and story behind that. It was a kind of a small craft distillery. We enjoyed the tour, brought, brought home three bottles of whiskey. This is for Mrs. Captain. She wanted their afterglow. It's a ginger infused whiskey and I think they just throw ginger into the barrel while it's aging. I haven't had any, but I see that Mrs. Captain uh, cracked that open while I was gone. I bought their two deep cuts. I paid $85 for each of these whiskeys. I think Deep Cuts just refers to how it was distilled. They talk about an alembic uh, still or something like that. They're both about 119.6 or 8 proof, single barrel cast strength. This is a rye, this is a bourbon. I'm excited to get into these whiskeys. I think we had a small taste of one at the distillery. But really I wanted to talk about Kentucky, Louisville was where I went specifically. I wanted to talk about the uh, tasting of the tours that I went on and the stores and the pours. And then we're gonna get to the bottles. And I set myself a limit of six bottles and $1,000. As you can tell, I went slightly over the six bottle limit. Things are kind of crazy. We got two barrels tonight because we couldn't fit them all on one bar barrel safely. If you are here just for the bottle haul, I will put chapter links in the in in the on the video here so feel free to skip to the bottles if that's just what you're here for but i think it's pretty interesting if you've never been to Lua before maybe you're interested in what i've got to say about the uh, tours and the stores there First of all, I went to Louisville alone. I had a couple friends who were gonna go and because of family reasons, they were unable to. So I flew solo. I had all day Tuesday, spent two nights there and left late on Thursday. If you are planning to go to Louisville, just be advised that a lot of distilleries are closed on Monday and Tuesday. So factor that into your travel plans. I pre-booked, that's another thing. If you're gonna go to Louisville or Kentucky, uh, book tours as soon as you can. Well, I was gonna go a couple months ago, I didn't book any tours, and by the time I was ready to go, it was too late. Everything was sold out, so I just didn't even go. This time I had myself a tour booked at uh, Jim Beam on Wednesday and Maker's Mark on Thursday. And while I was on the airplane in Pittsburgh, heading down to Louisville, I booked same day distillery tour at Kentucky Peerless. But really you should book those as soon as you can. And Buffalo Trace, I know is a very popular one. And Buffalo Trace is free to book. So a lot of guys just book it and it books 90 days out, I believe. But if you show up, oftentimes you can get in. I've heard that distillery tour is great. I didn't take the opportunity. I didn't take the opportunity this time to go through Buffalo Trace. But that's about, certainly about the tours and the tastings there. And when you do the tours, you should always do the tastings. And I did a couple extra tastings at the, at the distilleries as well. When I was at distilleries and I visited numerous ones, the only other tasting that I did was at uh, Preservation Distillery. I did their Wadi Boone. Uh, I didn't purchase it, it wasn't cask strength, so I, it was a nice pour, but I just kind of passed after that. All the other distilleries that I went to, I just visited real quick, uh, looked around, and then moved on. But when you go to Louisville, one of the things you really do is go to the stores and do the pours. And whether you have bars or stores, you can do tastings and pours there. And that was, it was a great experience. It was a big part of the visit. I went to Merle's and The Garage. They're both uh, kind of restaurants. I had some pizza and some tacos and uh, pretzels. And I also had some really nice pours. Actually, The Garage, I just had a Jack and Coke. 
but at Merle's, I was there twice, got their tacos and pretzels, came back the next time, I had some, just the pretzels. They had some King of Kentucky on the shelf there. And I was like, hey, I don't, I don't know anything about King of Kentucky. I just saw the bottle, I was like, hey, I'll have a pour of that. And she's like, yeah, that's fine. Just so you know, it's 150. I was like, so $1.50? And she said, no, $150 per pour. So I passed and just got a Jack and Coke. It was kind of hot walking around. And so Jack and Coke uh, was, was pretty good at that moment. But I was there, I also got a JTS Brown. I got an Early Times. I did the Jack and Daniels number 27 gold maple finished whiskey. And uh, that's the great thing about going uh, to Louisville. You do these pours of these whiskeys, you just can't find in your city where you live. JTS Brown and Early Times, those are not expensive whiskeys. Those are not like fantastic, great pours. I mean, they were nice and I'm glad I experienced them. If you want a crazy pour, go to Waterfront. And whether you want to pour or not, you should go to Waterfront simply to look at what insane bottles they have that you or I will never purchase in our lives at that store. They had the, it was a pretty small store and they had an insane collection of some very, very premium whiskeys. They had a bottle of King of Kentucky there. They wanted $7,500 for that bottle. And I did a, a pour there. I did one of the uh, Four Roses. It was their super premium. That's what it's called. It's a Japanese only uh, product, though they did have a bottle there. They wanted 200 bucks for it. I, I'm, I'm kind of sleeping on Four Roses right now. Uh, maybe I'll get to them someday. Really, I've only had their small batch. So it was a nice pour, but I passed after that. Then I went to uh, Evergreen. I just kind of went in and out of there. It wasn't really feeling the vibe there. I went to Tasting Fine Wines, and that is a very small store. They have a lot of wines. They also have some whiskeys. They have some pretty nice whiskeys. I did a pour there of the 2XO Innkeeper's Blend, which is a really nice pour. And I asked for a pour of the uh, Whistle Pig 18 year. And he talked me out of that and said, hey, you should get an Old Carter uh, cask strength rye. It's better and it costs less. And I was like, okay, I actually wanted to try the Whistle Pig 18 because I have a bottle that I haven't opened yet. But I went with the Old Carter and it was pretty cool because after right after you poured me that and the Old Carter rep walked in and so we chatted for a long while. And he actually, uh, he was poo-pooing the Midwinter Night's Dram by High West, which was on the shelf there, talking about how it's just uh, uh, just MB, MGP juice, but um, he didn't know he was talking to a big High West fan. And I'm like, it's not just Indiana juice, there is High West distillates in that bottle. But anyway, it was it was a nice time. I enjoyed my, my stop there. Justin's House of Bourbon, downtown Louisville, is a great store. Again, fairly small, um, but they have a nice selection, decent prices. Uh, they're very friendly there. You can take your camera, just film all you want, talk while you're filming. Uh, none of these stores were very busy while I was there. And so it was nice just to walk around and look at what they had. I went to Liquor Barn Express. You, just don't, need to, you don't need to go there. I went to a couple of different liquor barns and they are monstrous, huge stores. They didn't really have the super premium kind of products, but most of what you would want kind of ordinary type products, they have there. And uh, it's a great place to go if you're tight on time and you need like a one-stop shop liquor barn that's your that's your go-to place and who knows and actually at justin's house of bourbon when i was there the ben holiday reps were there with some uh, distillery only products and a couple of their other uh, bottles and i did have a taste in there so that was really nice so really i mean louisville was great i will say if you go to louisville take a wingman it's very unlike nashville where it's, i felt very safe in nashville you know it's a very different experience i was kind of expecting that kind of experience in louisville but it is not the same at all it's not very compact i didn't see any police officers while i was there and while i saw a lot of homeless in nashville i felt like they were harmless homeless where i felt a little sketched out sometimes walking around in that in louisville so i would say take yourself a wingman and don't walk around after night and you're of course going to have a car because you wanna go out to the distilleries. But inside Louisville, you're just gonna walk around. And it's, it's very, it's, it's pretty walkable, at least the places that I went to. That was kind of a really quick synopsis of what I did. Let's, let's go through the bottles and talk about what I bought while I was there. And I plan initially on only carrying six bottles home. You can see I have, I have 11 bottles I ended up with. And just a word of uh, caution, if you're gonna buy a bunch of bottles, if you are in a car, you're driving to Louisville, you can of course take as many as you want home. If you're flying, per the TSA rules, you can only carry five liters of alcohol 
and it can't be more than 140 proof. So be aware of that. I actually bought a second bag at Walmart. I bought a couple big rolls of bubble wrap and I wrapped the shist out of my bottles and stuck them in that uh, carry-on uh, that I checked and I was really concerned about it the whole way home, but I opened those bottles up or opened the bag up and all those bottles were intact. You should have seen that suitcase though. It was just four or five bottles in there, just bubble wrap, nothing but bubble wrap. All right, so two of the bottles, and I'm gonna unveil these in the order that I, um, that I bought them, if I can find them in that order. So on the way to Louisville, on the tarmac in Pittsburgh, I booked Kentucky Peerless Distillery while we were waiting to take off. And it was available same day on Tuesday, and so I went, and I'm really glad I did it. It was a nice tour, kind of a smallish, craftish type distillery. I really wanted their double oak product, but they were out of that. And after tasting after the tour, I tasted their rye finished in an absinthe barrel. So we've all had the port finish, sherry finish, rum finish, all these different finished whiskeys. And I've never had an absinthe finished uh, whiskey, have you? I mean, I've heard of guys talking about, oh, this whiskey was really kind of black licorice forward. But this is like drinking and sniffing black licorice. Uh, Mrs. Captain's favorite candy when we go on trips, when we go to the movie theater, is uh, Good and Plenty's. Nice uh, the black licorice center wrapped in some uh, sweet candy. And that's exactly what this bottle was like. In fact, I think Mrs. Captain's debut whiskey uh, video is gonna be a review of this Kentucky Peerless Distillery Rye finished in an absinthe barrel. So give me a thumbs up if you would like to see Mrs. Captain make her debut with the Peerless Rye. So then I walked from Peerless over to the Evan Williams Experience. I was gonna buy the single barrel, but they had another bottle that I've been hunting for in the Tampa Bay and I have not been able to find it. It was the Elijah Craig B523. And I'm sorry, I paid $134 for this uh, absent barrel finished rye from Peerless. I knew that when I found this Elijah Craig in the Tampa Bay, it was gonna be $99. All the barrel proofs, the a private barrel and the Tosa barrel, I paid $99 for it. That's what they're going for here in the valley or in the bay. And I was happy to find this for $79.99, uh, B523. I'm really excited to get into that bottle. So that's all I did on the first day as far as, uh, I didn't do any tastings or tours at the Evan Williams Experience. I just bought that bottle and got out of there. Next morning I got up early and I drove down to Buffalo Trace and just, just, just so you know, Buffalo Trace is about an hour and 10 minutes from Louisville. I got there about 7.45, an hour and 15 minutes before it opened. I was already like number 50 in line by the time I got there. And when they opened, there was probably 300 people in that line. That was nice just standing there and just chatting with the people who are around you. And they had some uh, Buffalo Trace people just kind of walking around the property and talking to the guests who were there in line. It was a nice experience. Is it really fun to stand in line for an hour and a quarter? No but it was, it was nice. And they announced probably half an hour before they opened what the bottle of the day was. And it had it been Weller or uh, Eagle Rare, I would have just left and come back on Thursday. But happily for me, it was a Blanton. I was kind of hoping for the E.H. Taylor, but I was really happy with a Blanton's. I got the S and uh, I got it for MSRP. So this is, all the other, the two bottles that I have of Blanton's right now, I paid at least two and a half times what I paid for this bottle. So I was happy to get it and get it at MSRP. And I actually opened my very first Blanton's last night here at my house. And I've had some pours at stores and bars and whatnot, but I opened my, my first bottle last night. And you know, I, I do really like Blanton's, it's nice. Maybe not my go-to uh, bourbon, but uh, it's very nice. So, okay, <coughs> Blanton's. So I drove from Buffalo Trace to Woodford Reserve. And I go into Lexington on the regular and I love looking down at the horse properties and the paddocks and it's just the rolling green fields and the white fences, it's so beautiful. But it was nice, that was a great drive from Buffalo Trace to Woodford Reserve. And I must have gone in the back way, I didn't see any other cars. It was like, you know, a narrow road, oak line, it was very beautiful. I really enjoyed the drive. And I got to the distillery and it was just immaculate. Just, it just screamed Lexington and money and horses and derby and golf and it's maybe a little boozy or 
Um, but it was really nice. I didn't buy, do anything there. I have all the woofer reserve, I guess, that I want. I didn't see any distillery only products. And maybe if you did a tour of tasting there, you would get access to those things, but I didn't do it. And I had a beat feed anyway to get to Jim Beam, which was the highlight of my trip to Louisville. If you go to Louisville and Kentucky, you got to do Jim Beam. I've kind of poo pooed Jim Beam uh, the past year or so, and I booked that tour because one of my friends, John, was going to go with me, and he's a big Jim Beam fan. And guess what? I am now too. Man, I had a great time at the Jim Beam Distillery. We went last year to Jack Daniels, and that was a great time, and Jim Beam was fantastic. It was a really nice tour. It was interactive. I learned quite a bit, and it was nice to learn about the history of Jim Beam and see their beautiful property. I had such a great time, and it was just a, a very nice property. And as a side note, if you do go to Jim Beam, you just gotta go to Jim Beam, and you have to get lunch at the kitchen table. Uh, on Wednesday, when I went there for the tour, after the tour, I had lunch, I had a margarita pizza, and it was, uh, it was really nice. But the whole point of me going to Jim Beam was to get the Jim Beam single barrel. And I ended up buying three bottles, not including the single barrel that day, and spent almost $500. So let's go through the three bottles that I bought at Jim Beam. Oh, and I'm sorry, I paid $63 for the Blantons. So the first bottle that I bought there, I saw this lineage and I, I couldn't pass this up. What a beautiful product. Here's the back. Of the I don't even know much about it. It says it's a collaboration between father and son. This was signed by Fred No, who, and he was there, Freddie, uh, because they had a new product coming out this year. And so Fred had pre-signed the box. I got Freddie to sign the box, the bottle out of the box, and I got both Freddie and Fred to sign. So I'm pretty excited about that, especially since this is a collaboration between those two and I have a signed bottle by both of them. A box, nice little plaque there. The way this bottle comes out, you grab the top here, just pull it out. This piece of wood here is magnetic. It has this little cutout, which holds the bottle in, has uh, you know a, a something from Fred and Freddie. The bottle is just plain and gorgeous. It's very clean, no writing except the legalese and barely legible at the bottom. It has this nice, beautiful um, glass, I what you call that, the signature that says lineage, and it is 111 proof. And if you read this little plaque right here, it says it is a 15 year old Jim Beam. So I'm pretty excited about this. And guys, I paid $250 for this bottle of Jim Beam. Not very parsimonious of me, I understand that. But, and I don't buy whiskeys to buy and not drink. I don't know when I'm gonna open this whiskey though. I am going to at some point. I just don't know when. So one of the other bottles that I bought that day, I've been drinking quite a few American single malts lately and they had this Stiller Share batch two. This is an American single malt and it is aged in uh, toasted barrels and ex-cognac casks. So it says a name, I, I don't know what that name is, VSOP casks, and it has a percentage of, um, of the distillates that were aged in the different barrels and casks. And 109 proof, this is a 375 milliliter I paid 70 bucks for it. And I believe it said, I wanna say six years on here. Um, and you know what, now I don't see it. I, I swear it said six years on here somewhere. And now I don't see an age statement on it. So I'm not gonna swear to that six years, but I'm pretty excited about that bottle. So the other bottle that I bought was the new release. So we were doing the tour and I started hearing about a new, re new product coming out that day at three o'clock. So after my tour and tasting, I did a new product tasting, which allowed uh, me to purchase the new Hardens Creek that came out on Wednesday at three o'clock. I was able to pre-buy it. 
and then I got in line, or there was no line because I was before the little line that was there to purchase this when it was released at three o'clock, and I was able to just go see uh, Fred and Freddie and have them sign my bottle. You can see they did there. It's a really nice, this little medallion, this leather strap. Uh, it's kind of reminiscent of this lineage bottle here. And this is the Frankfurt edition. So they're doing this Hardens Creek release this year. And what it's doing is it's highlighting how microclimates can change the whiskey. So the Claremont release they did earlier this year, those barrels aged in Claremont. These barrels aged in Frankfurt. And the girl who did a new product tasting, she uh, poured me a neat pour and an old fashioned. She was talking about the differences and she referred to one of the uh, brick houses or whatever where they store the age of the barrels. It was in a, she called it a holla. And it sounded like a, like a valley. And so it never received any sunlight and there was a stream nearby. So you had that extra moisture and humidity, which was a different microclimate than, uh, than, than the other brick houses wherever they were at. So I'm pretty excited about this one. And I just noticed earlier that it even says on here, and I bet the Claremont bottle that came out earlier this year, it has, it has the average rainfall, average annual temperature, longitude, latitude, and the number of rack houses in Frankfurt. And I bet if you look at the Claremont bottle, it's, the numbers are different because it's in a different location. And actually, I really think this, this exp these expressions by Jim Beam really make the case, stick with me here, really make the case for MGP. Simply, people poo-poo MGP all the time and, oh, it's just Indiana whiskey. And it's true, it is Indiana distillates. But if you move that barrel to Las Vegas for Smokehouse, if you move it to Northern California for Redwood Empire, if you move it to Wanship, Utah for um, High West, if you move it to wherever, then that different climate is going to change those distillates as long as they let to sit there for a while. They don't just buy it and then bottle it. So Jim Beam actually, I think, kind of makes the case for MGP. And uh, so I'm, I did have a pour at the kitchen table of the Claremont. I had a pour of this at uh, the new product tasting and they were both really good. I'm excited, I'm gonna open this bottle for sure before too long and give you a nice review. I paid $169 for this bottle. So the other bottle that I bought from Jim Beam that day, oh, that was one, two, three, yeah, okay. So 250, $169.99 dollars and $70. And that was a day, it was pretty much over. And next day I got up, I had a reservation at Maker's Mark. And again, if you are gonna go to Louisville or Kentucky, book your reservations as soon as you can. I wasn't really excited about going to Maker's Mark. It wasn't my first choice of distilleries to visit, but I am really glad that I did. It was a beautiful property, kind of a mix of new and old. The tour guide, he was great, and the property was very beautiful and historic. I, I had a great time. The veteran, they gave me a nice uh, little sew-on patch to give to the veterans who check in for the tours. And you know, it's Maker's Mark and my first time there. So when you do places for the first time, you should do all the touristy stuff. So I did the whole dippy dip thing with my bottle. I bought the cheapest bottle I could find at the gift store, a 375 milliliter bottle of their bourbon. I paid $19.99 for this. I was able to dip it and had a nice time. Apparently uh, they judge your dippings on how many legs you get and I have six. And she said I did a nice job. I don't know if I'm gonna open this or not. Um, you know, I have some other Maker's Mark bourbons that are open, so it's just kind of cool. Uh, as a side note, at Jim Beam, they were barreling, uh, bottling um, Knob Creek single uh, barrel that day. And they also would allow you to actually clean the bottle and, and then they would fill it up, uh, cork it, and allow you to dip that Knob Creek in there. And they would allow you to put your thumbprints and uh, kind of etch into that wax if you wanted to. I kind of wish that these guys would do that too. But they kind of guarded this. I think they're scared of you burning yourself. But uh, I had a good time, Maker's Mark. It was a nice tour. And I would suggest that you do that one. After Maker's Mark, I was hungry. I went back to Jim Beam, had their hamburger and the bourbon cake. I had a pour of the Claremont and it was a really good time. And I bought two more bottles while I was at Jim Beam that day for a grand total of five bottles from Jim Beam. 
So I went ahead and got the Jim Beam single barrel for $41.99. I was really looking forward to that bottle and I'm excited to open it. It's um, 108 proof. I'm trying to see if I saw an age statement on there. I don't see an age statement on here. It just says uh, single barrel 108 proof. Cool. I'm excited to get into that one. And the other bottle I bought at uh, Jim Beam, here we go, this is my last bottle. Again, I've been drinking some uh, American Single Malts lately. I found this Claremont Steep, and I wasn't sure originally why this was different than the distiller share, but this is finishing those cognac casks. This is not, and I only paid uh, $59.99 for this bottle, which is less than a bottle half that size. It's 94 proof, malted barley, American Single Malt Whiskey. And I don't see an age statement on this one either. Oh yeah, aged uh, 60 months. So five-year-old American single malt. Have you tried American single malt? I know a lot of guys just don't like it. Um, they say, it's oh, it's really like scotch. It is not though. I mean, scotch, for the most part, it's peated. So they take that peat, they burn it, and they use it to smoke the grains. And, uh, you know, it's not done on the, some American single malts, very few with teething the grains, but most of them are high west, high country, Stranahan's, they don't peat those whiskeys. It's more like Irish whiskey, if you ask me, than, uh, than scotch, but what do I know? But I paid, yeah, $59.99 for the Claremont Steep, so that's five bottles that I got from Jim Beam. So I drove from Jim Beam, I went to Preservation Distillery, had that little tasting, I didn't buy anything, then went back to Louisville, back to the Evan Williams uh, experience, because I really wanted their single barrel from Evan Williams. And I paid $44.99 for this bottle. Um, and it is, if you're looking for this wherever you are, you're not gonna find it. Apparently it's a Kentucky only product now. This is 86.6 .6 proof. Um, Barreled on 2015, bottled on in 23. So eight, so seven and a half years old. So that that's that's pretty nice. I'm 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 excited for this. I don't I don't drink a lot of Evan Williams and I know I've made fun of my one co I don't made fun of, but kind of uh, you know, I have some co-workers who just drink Evan Williams and so I, I've not drank a lot of it. I had their bottle and bond which I enjoyed and I have the white label right now and you know, it, it, it's okay, it, it's on par, you know, with Jim Beam White Label and the old number seven. But Evan Williams, a single barrel, looking forward to that. So the last bottle, and the only bottle that I bought at a store that I didn't buy at a distillery, I went from the Evan Williams experience to Justin's House of Bourbon, which is a great store. If you go to Louisville, you guys should go there and check them out, and uh, you can do some tastings there. Like I said, the Ben Holiday guys were there, they had some products that were distillery only, and they had their bottled and bond and their red wheat whiskey. I paid $59.99. My last bottle in Kentucky was actually a Missouri whiskey. Uh, ben Holiday, bottled and bond, $59.99 for this bottle. Um, I had a pour of this at the store, and I really enjoyed it. And you know, it's like, it's really hard to go wrong with the bottled and bonds. And I thought $59.99 was a pretty good deal for this bottle. So a quick recap in the order that I purchased them. Kentucky Peerless, $134. Elijah Craig, $79.99. Blanton's, $63. With the Jim Beam. Paid $250 for the Lineage, $70 for the Distiller's Share, and $169.99 for the Hardens Creek Frankfurt. Next morning, I went to Maker's Mark, $19.99 for this little bourbon. Back to Jim Beam. Got the single barrel, $41.99, and Claremont Steep for $59.99. After Jim Beam, I went down to Evan Williams, picked up the single barrel for $44.99, and finished my trip off with $59.99 for the Ben Holiday Bottled and Bond. For a grand total of $993.93. So I'm pretty excited about that. So average price is less than $80. I got some pretty nice products here. I was really expecting to buy more bottles at stores and less bottles at distilleries, but who could pass these prices up? 
And I didn't really need the lineage. I didn't really need the Hardin's Creek. I would have been happy with this uh, haul without those two bottles, but I'm even more excited with those two bottles now in my collection. And like I said, I don't know when I'm gonna open the lineage. At some point I will. Um, so, so what do you think? Uh, have you been to Kentucky? Have you bought some whiskeys there? Have you done some pours? Is it on your bucket list of things to do? And I, I think you should. Everyone should go at least once and try it out. Just take a wingman and don't go out after night. All right, my guys, if you enjoyed the video, like it, it's free. Subscribe to see more of my content. Again, I do book and whiskey reviews. Feel free to check out my channel. And for now, I hope you are reading something good and drinking something great. Turn the pages, my friends, and stay thirsty. Cheers. <laughs>